Well, hello, and welcome back to the Builder Dad shop. I am Builder Dad Dan, and this is my shop. Now, today I want to talk to you about a topic that's come up a quite a few times, especially in the last few weeks, because I just bought uh, two brand new MK4 printers from Prusa. They're not here yet, so I can't really tell you anything about them other than I'm really excited to get them. But the one topic that's been coming up is why do I like my Prusa printers so much and why do I prefer them over the Bamboo Lab X1 carbon that I have. And it really comes down to the experience. For me, I print a lot of things for my shop and I like to do it in PETG. Now, PETG works great on the Prusas. I actually use Prusa Mint. So it's Prusa's version of PETG or their brand of filament that they use, that they make. And so I use their brand for PETG. Now, when I got the X1 Carbon, I was really excited about it because the whole claim to its fame was faster printing. Um, faster printing, I could use multiple filament colors, so I got the, the AMS so I could switch between four different filaments easily, keep them racked. And so my hope was to switch over and do this with PETG. Well, the first print that I tried with PETG, I actually clogged the nozzle, and that was where the problem started. And so the problem started with me having to research a lot of the problem. The, the thing was that Bamboo, especially at that time, because this is a few months ago, and even now they still don't really have that great of support, but the only way to figure out the answer was to go to Reddit, to go to YouTube and watch videos, compile stuff. I had to watch somebody take apart an extruder. I had to watch somebody else do something different. And I could compile all those things together and say, okay, this is what I have to do to fix this printer. So it wasn't like a clear troubleshooting path for the clog. Now move forward past the clog, I addressed that issue. And then the next thing was I couldn't get the speed at pet G the way I wanted to in a quick fashion where I could print fast and print pet G accurately. The only way to print pet G accurately was to slow the speed way down and actually slow it down to the same speed as the Prusa. Now, I still had a few issues at that and then I was working my way through them. Well, along that path, I actually had two enclosures for Prusa coming. So my biggest problem with my MK3 S pluses were that I print in my office. And so I have my desktop machine in there and it's got air moving and it's, it's doesn't not like I have an air vent blowing on it and things, but there's air movement within my office. And so I kept having issues with part curling where the corners of the prints would curl up. And so that was one of the big things where I'm like, well, okay, well, I don't have to worry about this anymore. I'm going to get the X1. I'm going to be really happy with it. The X1 is going to do great. And maybe I'm not going to run these Prusas all that much anymore. Well, I started having all those problems with the X1. I had at the time an order placed for the enclosures for Prusa. And so I let that order happen and I got my printer enclosures for Prusa. And I'll tell you what, that was the game changer for me. Putting those two Prusa printers into their enclosures, um, as a result of that, I added a couple extra things. I put the blaze cut fire suppression in there so I had um, ease of mind in running them more hours than I was awake. Um, and so you can say what you want about that, but I feel very comfortable running those printers all the time. Mine run roughly somewhere between probably 16 and 22 hours a day, um, just because of the way I sequence the jobs that they're running. And so those two printers are running basically nonstop and I really like them. The, the enclosures for whatever reason, uh, I'm assuming it's just because I'm heating that chamber up and so I have a stable print environment now. The enclosures are cause or are preventing me from having curling issues. Um, one thing along this whole path was originally uh, two years ago, I wasn't really cooking my PLA or my pet G at all. About a year ago, I got a Sunlu dryer and I've been drying all of my pet G as well. So I knew dry filament was my issue. I, with the bamboo, I knew the 
the filament wasn't the issue because it's premium filament. And so it all came down to the issue was the bamboo. And so I tried Orca Slicer. I tried Bamboo Studios. I've taken multiple updates. I went on Reddit. I have a whole forum on PetG and multiple people helping me try to figure it out. And as I was reading their posts about the same problems. And so it was kind of like a hit or miss. Like some people wouldn't have any problems. Some people like me would have tons of problems. And so for me, realistically, it's all about the tried and true, the consistency. There's a saying we have at work is once you establish rock, you don't mess with it because it's the foundation of your house. And for my shop and my printing needs, the Prusas have become that foundation. So now that those two Prusas are in cases, they run flawlessly. Um, they run a lot of hours a day. I've had some problems with them. So there's, it's not like they're immune to problems. One of the printers had a hot end replaced, one had a thermistor replaced, one had x-axis layer shifting problems that luckily enough I could contact Prusa support. So here my experience with Bamboo was I had to look up different ways of solving problems. With Prusa I could look it up but I could also just message them and say hey wait on hold for 20 minutes and start talking to a rep and say okay this is the problem I'm having they'd say try this okay it's not that it's this and then we worked our way through it and all of a sudden it's like hey okay your next thing you want to replace is your bearings and I'll tell you what I replaced the bearings flawless I walked through their own Prusa troubleshooting guide of how to replace the bearings it was I think 29 steps and it took me two hours to do it in total and it was super smooth and easy. Um, while I don't and look forward to the next time I do it, I am looking forward to the next time I do it because I know exactly what to do and what to replace. Um, that's really it. I, I think for me, the reason I love Prusa so much is because they've got the support. They've got the time in the industry. Um, yeah, it's slower, but I know the MK4 has new things coming out with the slicer software to optimize the new extruder, the new load cell calibration. And so I'm really excited about what the MK4 is going to do. But you know what? Beyond the MK4 being excited about that, I'm excited for what my MK3S Pluses are doing. Great machines. I've got them dialed in perfect. I know exactly how to troubleshoot them and work with them. I've spent a lot of time with them. And so for me, it's all about that. It's all about that established foundation. And that's why I like Prusa. So I hope this video helps you out. If you're on the fence about what printer, you know, there, there's a ton of forums out there. There's a ton of things to, to read and look at. You know, some people will swear by different brands. They'll swear by Creality and different things. I, I'm not against them. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of those brands. All I can talk about is my experience and the situation that I've had. And for me, the Prusas make sense. They have been rock solid and that's why I stick with them. So if you have any questions, reach out and I will do my best to answer them. And uh, until next time, stay safe, uh, print happy, woodwork happy if you're woodworking, and uh, I'll see you later.